Welcome to the Rusted Garden episode four. Today we are going to talk about a lot. We're going to talk about the peppers I have germinating. We're going to talk about germination times, how to water them real quick. We're going to go over how do you take care of all these different plants. And if you've gone out to Home Depots or Lowe's, you've probably seen them. How do you take care of the goji berry, the hardy kiwi, hardy figs. We have uh, strawberries and different um, setups. I'm going to talk about those, what are better. Planting potatoes. We're going to do a little bit on cocoa core. I'm going to talk about plant acclimation. Talk about winter sowing in, you know, these containers and really cover a lot. But again, this is a long format video. There's going to be a digital table of com com yeah, comments of contents and you can just click to the part that's most interesting to you and you can just jump through the video. I want to thank my sponsor. I'm going to be working with All America Selections for the entire year and in fact we just started a Facebook group that I'm hosting. It's called Flower and Vegetable Winners if you want to check that out on Facebook. But All America Selections is a nonprofit organization that's been around for 85 years and they only do one thing really. They do yearly seed trials where they find the best new vegetables, fruits, ornamentals and flowers and whatever the best is that year they're deemed all america selection winners and if you go to any seed catalog you will see their emblem next to different seeds they don't sell the seeds they're not making money from selling the seeds they just declare the best new varieties out on the market and when you see that you know that you're getting something that's been tested nationally proven at the local level and you're going to get a plant that does really really well all right let's get to the peppers so this is my actual wave of peppers that I'm going to plant. Sometimes I put peppers, um, I start them early just so that I can use them as props and videos, but these are actually my flats that I'm going to use um, this year. And I'm starting them 10 to, 10 to 12 weeks early before they would get outdoors. And the way you figure that out again is you look to see when the nights are going to be about 50 degrees in your area and then you just count backwards. Peppers can be held indoors, you know, for you know, 10 to 12 weeks. As long as you got the right lighting, you can take care of them. What I wanted to show you here that's really interesting, I think, is this is all kinds of different varieties. So generally speaking, your sweet peppers and mid-range heat peppers germinate fairly quickly in comparison. The hotter peppers tend to germinate a little bit more slowly. But these were planted on February 4th. Today is the 23rd of February, I believe. Um, and they've germinated at different speeds. So I don't want you to get discouraged. So when planted on the 24th, you can see some of them look nice and large. This one here just germinated a couple days ago. That is the uh, Isleno pepper. This one is the red habanero. Just broke the surface a day or two ago. While the other peppers germinated maybe in seven days, some of them are taking up to 24 days to break the surface. So when you're growing peppers, they like to germinate in temperatures really above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. They do fine at 70, 75. They just take a little bit longer. So they're going to germinate between 7 and 28 days. So don't get discouraged if some of your peppers haven't germinated for up to three weeks going on to the fourth week. If you do have some trouble, you might want to get a heat mat that goes underneath, raise the temperature over 80 degrees, and that does help for germination. But peppers can take seven to 28 days depending on the variety. The next thing I want to show you, let me move this. Get that out of the way. We'll get to that later. Is watering. A lot of people ask about when do I water my plants? And I've talked about it, but it's really important because you don't want peppers to stay soaked at the root level all the time. You want them to dry out. The flat that I just showed you I fully watered. So right here, this one's fully watered. It's heavier. That's how you know that your seed starts are watered. It's going to be a lot heavier because it's saturated with water. But it's the same starting mix and you can see how it's lighter across here. The top of the starting mix is always going to lighten first and when it gets completely light across all six cells, for example, here's one that the top two are lightened or lighter and the bottom four still have water in it. So this one's saying, hey, I'm almost ready to be watered. This one is telling you it needs to be watered. The top is dried up. And let's see if I can do this carefully. Just because the top dries out, I'm gonna mess up all the starting mix. Ooh, that's not so good. Anyway, just because the top is dried out, down at the bottom, 
it's still dark. There's still water in there. So the top is always going to be the signal that it's time to water. Let me put some more starting mix in there and fix this real quick. Take care of that. Because you definitely want your peppers to have a little bit of a drying out period. A lot of your seed starts benefit from not having wet roots all the time. Let them dry out a little bit. All right, let me get this cleaned up and then we'll start talking about these different uh, plants that you can pick up at Home Depot. So if you go into Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, you're gonna find these different plants there. Uh, and they're quality plants. Now, what I really wanna cover is that you have to buy these quickly and then you have to take care of them indoors. Now, in some zones, you're gonna be able to put these right outside into five gallon buckets. That's what I recommend for the first year because these will grow, they're winter hardy, they're good down to negative temperatures. And you have to look, you know, on the back of the box, it'll tell you what zones they're good for how much cold they can take. But it's nice to grow, you know, these plants for the first year in a five gallon container and then transplant it to where you want it to go. Now, you'll see that these are growing. So tip number one, and seriously, is you don't want to just go and buy sticks. You want to see some green growth on there. You want to see some, uh, you know, leaves coming out on the plants. Now, being February, these probably came out two or three weeks ago, and these have actually been sitting in my house two weeks. I believe, I'm not sure 100%, but when they're set up like this, they're kept in cold storage, so they stay dormant. Once they get into the warmth of Home Depot and Lowe's, Walmart, they start growing. And what happens when a plant grows? Well, it starts taking the moisture and nutrients out of here. So eventually, it's going to run out of water. It's going to um, dry up and it's going to do something like this. This is the blueberry, yeah, blueberry plant that was uh, nice and strong, but the leaves are starting to die out. So when you get these, I really recommend if they're not going straight outside, you know, based on your zone, in my zone, it's too cold right now, a frost would come and kill off all this growth. I want to keep this growth. Get them into containers like this. Now, this is cocoa core. You can get this brick at the end of the video. I'll just do a quick um, hydration of this. And basically, I'd take a two and a half gallon bucket, drop the whole brick in here, pour in bo boiling water, and it will turn into something just like this. And you can plant in it. Now, for seed starting, you can use cocoa core. I don't personally like straight cocoa core. I think it's a little bit, um, there's too much space in there. I like the peat, uh, the peat, the peat moss mix, the starting mix, like this. I just feel the plants do a little bit better, but you could use either. And actually, if you combine them, that's probably the best of both worlds because Coco Core is renewable. Now I'll put that in there. So when you get these plants, you're going to want to make sure you take care of them. Get them out of the bag. This is the goji berry. And I actually have one that has grown out two winters outside in a five gallon, contain in a five gallon container and that's going to go somewhere on my property this year. When you take this out, you don't have to be super gentle, but be as gentle as you can, and just pull it out. You're gonna see that it's nice and moist, nice white roots are growing, that's what you wanna continue. There's even a vine coming out of here, or a shoot coming out of there. This is just Cocoa core, there's nothing in here in the way of fertilizer right now. Now you can get these two gallon um, liners. These are paint, paint bucket liners and I think that's seven there because I bought two packs. But it was five for five dollars. So if you go into Ho Home Depot or Lowe's and you look at the different products around, you can repurpose them for the garden. But this is enough space to get these growing in the house and also I'll talk about acclimating them and transitioning them outside. So this is Coco Core and Peat Mix, a 50-50 mix. And you're just going to drop the plant in here, break up the roots just a little bit, soften them up. Don't let the big clumps fall. You don't want to try not to break any roots that are starting to grow. and just drop it down there. And we're going to fill it. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. All the way up to about where that little shoot is coming out. Press it in. You want a nice tight starting base here for the roots to grow into. And then we would water this in with any fertilizer you want to use. You could use the chemical fertilizers, cut it down to a strength, you know, usually quarter strength if you use any chemical fertilizers. Try and get it around a 555. You could use organic fertilizers if you want. Try and make sure that measure of NP and K is close to 552. Sometimes the organic fertilizers have a low NPK. It's not going to hurt your plant, but because these plants are ready to get going, a little more fertilizer in there is, is perfectly fine. So I would just water this in once with a liquid fertilizer of my choice. There's two kinds of fertilizers. You want one, it's, it's a soluble fertilizer. One's organic, one's chemical, either one is fine. Soluble fertilizer means is once you mix it with water, put it into the soil, your plant's going to be able to absorb it and use it. There's no soil life in here. So if you use the insoluble organic fertilizers, that fertilizer is just going to sit in here. There's no life to break it down and render the N, P, and K and make it available for your plant. So let's just do another one real quick. Um, the hardy fig. Hardy fig, and whenever it says hardy, it usually means it's going to survive negative degree cold. So that's really good for different areas. Again, that's a cocoa core and peat moss mix. There's no fertilizer in there. I have been experimenting. All of my plants are actually growing with worm castings. I mean, they're using worm casting in the starting mix or the potting up mix in some capacity, or I'm using worm casting tea and they're doing pretty well. When that experiment's done, I will talk more about that in a video. Now the root system here is completely different than the goji berry, but the process is the same. You can see the roots are growing down on the bottom. Just loosen them up a little bit. We're going to want to try and cover this to here. Let's move some of this around. And then just put in the mix. And again, you want to do this because if you let these sit too long in the boxes, they're going to run out of moisture. There's going to be problems. They're not getting enough light, even though they're growing here. And if you buy them too late, in the season at Home Depot or Lowe's, they're going to be stressed. So try and get them now and try and hold them in containers like this. Now the reason I'm doing the smaller containers is because I'm going to be bringing these in and out. And you can see that it's not quite as deep as I might want it to go. But again, shoots are coming up right here. This is perfectly fine. I'll be able to easily take these in and out of my house and acclimate them to the outdoors. And that's the other part that I want to talk about. So these are all growing indoors. They're probably kept in storage. When they get to the nice warm Home Depot, they start putting out leaves. They don't know what the sun is. So if I were to put these right outside, sunny day, it's going to come and it's going to kill off all of this growth. So you have to slowly acclimate all your indoor plants to the outdoors. They have to get used to not only the sun, but they have to get uh, used to the change in temperatures. They have to get used to the wind and they really um, can do this over a seven to 10 day period. I can't give you an exact recipe, but it's best if you have like right now we have 50 degree days. It's, it's completely cloudy. So these can go out for hours on a fully cloudy day get used to the sun, bring it in, bring them in at night. Don't let them get the, you know, extreme cold or the changes in the nighttime temperatures. And then over a week, when the sun starts coming out, you can give them 30 minutes, an hour of sun, and all this growth is going to toughen up. It's going to stay on the plant and it'll give the plants a really nice jump for the season. And again, if you wanted to, you could put them into a bigger container. I just find this is all you really need. And we would water that in with a water soluble fertilizer once and take care of it. You could also put them straight into a five gallon container depending on where you want to go. 
So we took care of the fig, we took care of the goji berry. Blueberries would do the same. Now in the case of the blueberry, I would do one thing different. Blueberries like acidity. So instead of doing it with 50% core or just in core, I would just go with the peat moss. Peat moss is more acidic. Your blueberry plant's going to really appreciate it. Hardy kiwi can go into any mix. Let's get these out of the way. Now the next thing is strawberries. And strawberries can be a problem. You can buy them like this, which I recommend they're $8 if you're gonna buy something in a bag. When you buy them this way, and it's typically in the green bag, um, you know, they're less expensive. It says 10 roots. I think this has 10 varieties in here too. In either case, you wanna get these really early because if this sits in here and dries out, the roots are gonna dry out. And I know, because I've had trouble before, a lot of people have trouble getting all of these to um, really germinate. So let's start with these. Now let's see what's the easiest way. Let me get some containers over here. So what I'd like to do is put these into larger containers, separate them out. Hopefully we see a little bit of growth, which I don't see any. And this is what they look like. There's probably a rubber band holding these together somewhere but you just break them up, find the rubber band, there it is, take it off, and break these into your 10 pieces. And they're moist, there's no growth, there's a root side, this is the root side right here, this is the crown side where the leaves are, and this is where you like to see it, just a little bit of growth. Don't know if these are alive or not, but the root side is here, the crown side is up here. When you plant these, the crown must be above the ground or you're gonna kill your plant off. I'll show you how to do that in a second. I also like to take these and then soak them in some cold water, you know, for about an hour before I plant them, but we don't need to do that now. I'll just show you how to do it. So this is the green bag that you probably find at Walmart. Three bucks, 10 strawberries. Here's the other one that's more expensive. This is $8. And I'm assuming that these are gonna be a little bit nicer looking. And they are. So you, and you can already see, oh, I'll show you, the growth is on here. They're gonna be in rubber bands too. And again, this is 10 strawberries. And this is what you wanna see. You can see the growth on a lot of these. Some of it's just white. It's not quite green because there's no sunlight under there. You can see the root growth. And you're gonna want to get these into four inch containers, something about this size. Now, if you were gonna plant these straight outdoors into your flower boxes or into your earth beds, you're gonna want to um, dig a hole, put a mound of soil, say the mound is my fist there, and then you would just drape the roots all around the mound and you would plant or fill in the soil so that the crown is above the soil. You wanna make sure you don't bury the crown or you're gonna have problems. So to get them into these cups, and the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna get it growing. I wanna get the leaves growing. It's too cold outside. We're not gonna be able to spread the root system out perfectly, but this will work. Just take this, you know, spread these out. We're gonna Press the starting mix in, about a quarter of the way, a third of the way, and just drop that in. The roots will take care of themselves, and then we're going to just fill in the rest of the space. Press it in, you always want a nice, dense area for the roots to grow into. It shouldn't be all just really, really loose. Because there's so much air space in here when you can pack peat moss or cocoa core, you can't really cause a problem. Pack it in there, give the roots, the roots something to grow in. So this is it. The crown is above the soil, the roots are below the soil. We would water this in with a water-soluble fertilizer. These are gonna go under my grow lights. You just need to water them once with the fertilizer. It'll be perfectly fine. It's too cold outside. In fact, it's warm right now. But if I rushed all this outdoors, 
Last year I got burned, you know, two weeks into March, a cold spell came and just killed everything back and it really wasn't worth my time. So I'm gonna get these started indoors. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, in these episodes, I'm always gonna do updates on the previous episodes so you can see the growth, but I'm also doing tours, one or two tours a month, and you can see that everything that I seed started, you can see the different sizes that they are inside my house if you go and check the tour from a couple of days ago. A couple days ago. All right, so the strawberries will be taken care of. Let's talk about onions. A lot of people, you can go and buy your uh, onion sets just like this. They're called onion sets, don't know why, but that's how you differentiate it. An onion set is just these second year bulbs. Now, they're real tiny. They look just like this. These are viable. Again, you wanna buy these early when you see them at Home Depot or Lowe's because they will start to dry out in here. Sometimes they start to rot but these are perfectly fine. Open the box up when you're in there, inspect them, give them a smell. If they smell like rotted onions, pick a different box, but these are all perfectly fine. Most of them will be viable. Now, onions are biennials. So in the second year, an onion sends up that thick green stalk, and then it has that beautiful flower on top. The Allium family does this, and then it flowers, and you don't get a nice fat onion because they're biennials the second year, their whole job is to flower and set seed and reproduce. A lot of times what happens is when you buy these sets, even though these are tiny, these onions believe they're second year onions. So when you put them into the ground, sometimes you don't get necessarily nice root development uh, or nice bulb development, nice big onion to harvest because they actually try and send up that flower and reproduce. Um, but when you buy these, you wanna make sure you're buying tiny onions. If they're a little bit bigger, they're even more under the belief that they're ready to uh, set a flower. So that's just FYI. If you do a lot of onions this way, plant a lot of onions this way, and you get a lot of flowers, it's because sometimes the sets, the onions themselves believe they're second year onions and they set flowers. The way that I like to do it, and the way you would plant these, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can't really plant an onion wrong. If you're in doubt, plant it on the side. Um, the onion will take care of itself, but you just have to plant them a half an inch to one inch deep. The bottom that has like a little bit of fuzz on it, that's the root side. So you would always put the root side down. Right here, there's an onion coming up, you can tell, and it would just go in the ground about an inch deep, a half an inch deep, and spread them out anywhere from an inch to four inches apart, depending on the different variety. I like to grow my onions from seed because they're first year onions, they are going to grow a nice onion for you. Let's put that over here. And in the previous videos, I talked about it. In my tour, I show you this. These are Walla Walla onions. I overseed them, eight, 12, 15 seeds per cell. They're practically indestructible. The roots are nice and wiry. I'll let these grow in here till I'm ready to take them outside. And that'll probably be in about two weeks around here. Break this apart, just take the onion out, drop it in, and I get really nice onions that way because these onions believe the first year onions and they're gonna grow a nice bulb for you. Because I, again, shoot a lot of these videos and do props, these are some Walla Walla onions that I started before these and I put them into larger cups and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And these pr pretty much, when you go to a store, and you buy just the greens, those are called onion bunches. They're usually something like this, where it's just the seeds, the plants get to a mature size, they're still first year onions, they put them in a nice bunch and you buy them. Those onions typically form a nice onion head for you. And again, taking it out of the cup, you see the nice root system developing nicely. I'll leave it in here for a couple of weeks. Just break these apart, put them right into my ground. And this is a great way to get nice full onion bulbs. All right, let's take a break. Let me clean this up and then we're gonna to get to the sweet potatoes. Talk a little bit about acclimation for all your plants and ways to not bring bugs into the house. And then we'll do that cocoa core brick. Okay, let's start the second part of the video. We're gonna cover sweet potatoes, potatoes, planting them in containers. We're gonna uh, deal with this uh, cocoa core brick and I'm gonna to talk to you about what these bags are and we're going to talk about winter sowing, and I'll cover all of that. Before we get started, let's do the cocoa core brick now. You can get these, I got this at Home Depot, 
and it was $2.97. It's going to make, it says in here real quick, let's see if I can see it. Uh, I think it makes eight, to eight quarts of starting mix. But all you do, stick it into a container. I like these two and a half gallon buckets. I happen to have a slate floor so I can put boiling water on it. And you're gonna put in a couple quarts of hot water and you just pour it straight on. You wanna make sure, as always as I say, is that you have sterile starting mix or you're going to get fungus gnats in your seed starts. Let me get that out of the way. We'll let this do its thing while I'm talking about the other things that we're going to cover. Now you see these plastic bags. This is the fig that I just planted. And in the same breath of starting uh, your seed starting mix, making sure it's sterile, if I'm moving this plant inside and outside, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to be exposed to nature. This plant may do okay, but if I don't have this plastic bag on it, insects are going to come in here. They're going to be in the soil or on the soil or on the plant. And when I bring them indoors, they're going to go to my seed starts. So I sell these bags, but you can use definitely go and get some of your turkey bags from the grocery store. These are nice large bags. They have multi purposes. Set that down. And all you do is cover the plants that you're going to be bringing in and out just like this. This also creates a nice warm environment, a mini greenhouse, so to speak. So this is going to warm up and your plant will do a little bit better and it's easy to carry. Just move them in and out. Now this one, the plant isn't too tall, so the bag works perfectly. I think you can get really large turkey bags too. Now this one, this is the goji berry. One bag underneath here, the plant's too tall. Another bag on top. And again, this will make a mini greenhouse, but most importantly, it's going to protect the soil from getting bugs in it. So when you're moving this in and out, you're not bringing in insects to your area. I also use these bags and you can use, again, you can use the bags from grocery stores for my starting mix. Now what I've been doing recently is I put the starting mix in here, I uh, hydrate it, put the water in, and then I microwave it for a minute, minute and 30 seconds, take it out, move it around, put it in again two more times, and this really sterilizes the starting mix, and it's real easy to move around that way. All right, let's start with sweet potatoes and potatoes. These are a couple ways that you can buy them from the store, just like the strawberries. Sweet potatoes and potatoes are not really related. They're a distant relation. They're not the same vegetable. Difference being these are with the nightshade family and you can't really eat the leaves. They could be toxic to you, but you can eat the small leaves and shoots of the sweet potatoes. So they're not related even though they're both called potatoes. Sweet potatoes are grown differently. You grow them from slips and slips are the growth that come out of that potato. And February is a great time to get your slips started for your area. These plants love the warm weather, so you have time. And you just basically get your sweet potato. You can go to organic grocery stores and find potatoes. I have a couple sweet potato, yeah, sweet potato videos on my YouTube channel that shows you how to grow these start to finish if you want to look it up. But to get your slips started, this is just like the old experiment you did in grade school. Three, four, five toothpicks around, submerse it in water. This can go right to your windowsill like this. It will root out, you will get the green growth, you will get the slips, you break the slip off, you put them in water, they root, and then they will go into our containers. And again, subscribe to this, well, subscribe to my channel and follow the series and I'll show you what we do with this down the line. So those are the sweet potatoes. Now, your potatoes, and we're talking only about container to, uh, potatoes today, and that's what I like to do. In a container, we're gonna use a five gallon container. And you can get these containers just about anywhere. We're gonna put a hole about an inch up 
and I would just make a nice size hole about of a dime here. You never want your containers to hold water unless you have a real specific reason, especially with potatoes, because that excess water is going to rot the potatoes. So you want, definitely want drainage. But I'm not going to fill this here. This would go outside. These potatoes with the temperature in Maryland Zone 7, you can really put these out in the beginning of March, right into your containers. They're not going to freeze enough to damage the plant. And you would just use a potting mix. Any cheap potting mix or your container mix that's out there, you can uh, freshen it up and plant the potatoes right into the five gallon containers and they can sit outside and they can do their thing. But I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller container just to show you how to do it. Now, when you grow potatoes in a five gallon container, you're not going to get necessarily huge potatoes, but you'll get a lot of little baby potatoes. I like doing that, especially with these um, blue seed potatoes. Even though they're called blue seed, they're purple, but they're delicious. They're uh, a good small size. I like to actually grow them harvest them at small size, cut them in half, and then I pick green beans and I just have green beans potatoes. They're absolutely delicious. You could use bigger containers. You could go to seven gallon containers, 12 gallon containers, and you will get bigger uh, potatoes. Now, these are the blue potatoes. If you're doing larger potatoes, again, you may want a bigger container. That's up to you. But they definitely grow this way. So these are seed potatoes bought in a $3 packet like the strawberries. And it's real easy to identify if your potatoes are okay. If they're not soft, if they've got some sprouting, or it's called chitting, which is C-H-I-T-T-I-N-G, they're good to go. And they look just like that. This potato is ready to go on the ground. And again, in Maryland Zone 7, in about a week, these could really go right into the containers. And that was three potatoes for three bucks. You can go to your organic markets, buy any kind of potato you want. You just want to put them into a cool area and let them get some growth on it. That's what you want when you plant a seed potato. These are the other ones. They're smaller and they could be a different variety. These are both blue potatoes. I think this was Adirondack. This is Adirondack blue. And these are just called blue potatoes. And you can see that they've got their growth going too. That's all you're looking for. These are the perfect size just to go right into your containers. And we would do it just like this. Now, I'm going to put mine into a five gallon container. I've planted more than the number I'm going to show you before. I've done back filling before, but you're basically going to get your potting mix. You don't need to use starting mix outside. You can use any potting mix that's available. You can use a mix that you make, but you basically take the five gallon container and you're going to fill it halfway. And into this layer, you would put your fertilizer. A uh, bone meal is good, blood meal, any organic fertilizer, just follow the instructions. And that would be your insoluble fertilizer. Now, when you're using potting mix and you're using some dirt outside, you do have some soil life in your container soil. So eventually that soil life begins to multiply and it will take care of the insoluble fertilizer. We're also gonna water this in with the insoluble fertilizer. So your potatoes are going to get the insoluble mixed in the first half to whatever the instructions say that you're using. Don't worry about it, just follow what it is and just mix it well through. And then the potatoes go in. So imagine, really we're doing a five gallon container and we're gonna do one potato, two potato, three potato. Um, but it's gonna be a little more compact here. Just put it in right this way with the sprouts going up. Um, I'm gonna keep all these the blue. This part will go into the bottom. This part will go to the bottom and this would go right into my five gallon container. And then I would fill the five gallon container all the way up to the top, leave about an inch, press it down, make sure the potting mix is nicely pressed. The potatoes are going to be right here. They got the insoluble organic fertilizers here, whatever you want to use, the roots will grow into that. And then we can water it in with any fertilizer we want, any soluble fertilizer up top. They're watered in. That's basically all you're going to need to do um, until your potatoes are a little bit bigger and we'll talk about that in future videos.
In fact, in future episodes, we'll be getting outside and we'll be getting out of this studio area. But that's all you do for the setup for potatoes. Five gallon containers, three potatoes. If you get something bigger, you could put in four potatoes, maybe five potatoes. It all depends on what you want to do. You will definitely get potatoes growing in here. I do it every year. They won't be the, you know, the largest size, but they're going to be um, a lot of them and they're absolutely delicious. And I really like growing the blue type potatoes in here. Let's put this over here. All right, so we covered potatoes, sweet potatoes. Here's the core brick expanded with the hot water. And you can see that it pretty much crumbles apart. You'll be left with something like this, and that means you just need a little more hot water. And you can see the steam coming out. But one brick is going to fill up a two and a half gallon bucket. Still more to go. I put more water in there. You can use this for seed starting however you like. It's really good to use um, core as a 50% material in your container mixes to outdoors. I recommend peat moss, cocoa core, combination of both for at least 50% of your starting mixes. Your I'm sorry, not your starting mixes, for your container mixes outdoor. The more um, of the peat and cocoa core you have in your container mixes, the better it holds water and the better I think the plants do. The other 50% can be various things that you have in your yard. Okay, winter sowing. So these are just plastic containers from Home Depot. I actually got them yesterday. Uh, these were started in a bag, but the principle is the same. $2.10, they're on sale. You get four of them. They're perfect for winter sowing. They're perfect for transitioning your seedlings in and out of the inside of your house to the outdoors. Why do I like doing it this way? Because this creates a dome where bugs and insects won't get in there. And it also creates a little greenhouse, so it shelters them from the cooler weather. You can actually start your seeds indoors, and when they get to this size, put them in something like this, if you're not doing a lot, and then sit them outside during the day. Um, and because they're so small, you don't really have to acclimate them to the sun. The sun's gonna hit them, they're gonna toughen up, but they will be getting used to the outdoors while you're growing them indoors mostly. And you would bring these in at night when the freezing weather comes. But this little bit of dome is really nice. Now, you can also seed start directly outdoors and leave this out there for your cool weather crops, your lettuces, your spinach, kales, broccoli, cauliflower. And this was actually um, in a foil tray and I had one of these bags just over it and it was closed with a rubber band and that created a nice little greenhouse. They sat outside. Our weather has been nice for the last week so they sprouted. But I wanted to show you this. I like this setup better because it's easier if you're just you know starting a little bit you're not doing massive amounts of plants like I do. And you would just seed start like I showed you in video one, video two. Set the trays in here. Cover them up. Put them outside. If the temperatures are falling Below 32 degrees a night, go ahead and bring it in. Otherwise, leave them outside. You can also double bag this or double protect it, so to speak. Put your bag around this. These would even be able to probably take temperatures in the upper 20s and just do this. And these could sit outside, you know, when your night temperatures are in the 20s, the days are in the 30s or 40s. Even if it gets warmer, like 60 degrees and full sun is hitting this, it's sort of insulated from overheating because you've got a bag on the outside, a, the plastic container on the inside. The plastic container on the inside isn't totally crystal clear. So you can also protect your plants this way from overheating in the sun. But if it's, you know, a full sunny day and it's getting into the 60s, I would tend to move this into a shady area. But this setup is just perfect if you want to do winter sowing. You don't need grow lights. You just do something like this. You put your lettuce in here, put it outside, bring it in when the harder freezes come at night and things will germinate a little bit more slowly, but they'll be perfectly fine in here. And that's how you can seed start your cool weather crops. 
All right, well, I think I covered everything. Thank you so much for, you know, watching my YouTube channel and following these episodes. I think I'm gonna stick with the long format. A lot of people like them. There is that digital table of contents, so you can just jump through to the parts of the video that are most important to you. Please uh, check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com. And I also have links too for Amazon. If you wanna help out The Rusted Garden, um, use those links to Amazon. Anything you buy on Amazon, gets credited, I think, at like a 3% sale um, ratio to me. And I use that to buy all this kind of stuff, take care of the garden, and most of that money goes back to making videos and you know, hopefully helping you out with your gardens. Thanks again, and I will have the next episode out actually next Saturday. Thanks for watching.